You're watching 12 WKRC TV, a new generation of news. 12 Newsmakers starts now. Good morning and welcome to Newsmakers. This morning we begin preparing for the fall elections. Over the next eight weeks, we will focus on candidate and issue races in Ohio and Kentucky. We begin this morning with what will appear as issue one across the state of Ohio. Issue one proposes an amendment to the Ohio Constitution. The constitutional amendment is complex, running 17 pages, about 6,500 words. In effect, this one amendment will basically double the length of the Constitution of Ohio. The complexity of the amendments are great uh, and too great to spell out in detail, but by way of introduction, here are three major elements of note. Issue one would require Ohio courts to order treatment rather than incarceration for first and second time nonviolent drug offenders who request treatment. Second, judges would be limited to imposing a maximum of 90-day jail sentences on first and second time offenders who are convicted of illegal possession or use of drugs. Third, the amendment would create a substance abuse treatment fund that would require the expenditure of $247 million on treatment between 2003 and 2009. To explore the pros and cons of this proposal, I am joined this morning by two people. Edward Orlett is a former Ohio State Representative from Dayton, served 17 years on the Judiciary Committee, and is currently serving as the director of the Ohio Campaign for New Drug Policies. John Dallin is a Hamilton County Commissioner who was instrumental in creating the Drug Court in Hamilton County. John, welcome back to News Newsmakers. Thank you, Ed, welcome to Newsmakers. Thank you, Dan. And thank you for coming down from Columbus this morning. We appreciate that. Let's begin, Ed, with basic question. What's the motivation? Why are you proposing, why are you and your organization proposing this change, this constitutional amendment? Sure. Dan, let me correct one thing first, if I may. You had everything right on except for one thing. Okay. This amendment is 17 pages long. The Ohio Constitution is much longer than that. This does not double the Constitution. Okay. The Constitution is over 50 pages long. So okay. this I was is picking up something I read. I, I know. Our I opponents say that all the time, including some judges, and uh, okay. that's fine. But it's Thank it's, you for the Sure. It's glad. longer than the U.S. Constitution, from what I have heard. Longer than, okay, well, we, we'll get it. <laughs> right. No matter how long it is, we will get to the question right. of right. whether this should be a constitutional amendment in just a minute. But sure. what's, what's the motivation behind it? Issue one is needed because we are currently sending to prison every year thousands of Ohioans, mostly young Ohioans, nonviolent first and second time drug offenders. Uh, that costs Ohio's taxpayers $23,000 a year for each one of them. Each one of those people who have a drug addiction problem can be treated according to the Ohio Department of Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services for $3,500 a year. So there's a tremendous saving in taxpayer dollars by sending these people to treatment instead of to prison if they're not dangerous. And we clearly do not uh, include any violent person, anyone who is dealing in drugs or manufacturing drugs and persons driving under the influence. And let's be cl clear of a couple things, uh, because I stated it in a positive terms when I just went through that, but you've just reinforced that. This is for people who have possession and use charges, not for selling or dealing. Absolutely not. And secondly, not for people who uh, part of the offense has been uh, an act of violence or have violent history. Uh, any time within the past five years, they may not have had okay. any record. Of, of All right, so different approach, cost savings, et cetera. John, what do you think about that analysis for the need for this sort of, of change? Well, obviously, I disagree completely with Ed on that regard. Uh, one, that it, it is very interesting to me that uh, in Ohio, you don't go to prison for a low-level felony uh, conviction of, of use or, uh, for, of, of, alcohol, of uh, drugs. You don't go it. The state, through the sentencing bill, sentence, uh, Senate Bill 2, said those people go to jail. So they don't go to prison. They go to county jails they go to as county, opposed to state prisons. Is that's that what right. you're saying? And then we have uh, many drug courts in the state of Ohio. I think we're the leader in the whole country with respect to this. 
but even those counties that don't have drug courts, most of the people in, the, in what they call the general division of the court are offered treatment. And, and for first and second time offenders, hardly anybody g is incarcerated because they are offered treatment. So well, I, I disagree well, completely. So let's look at just these, this, you know, you said thousands of people are in our, our prisons for this. Yes, and may I expand on that? Yeah, what, 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 I, what are the statistics? Absolutely. Because I have seen conflicting statistics. These figures, and John, I'll give you a copy of this. These figures are from the Department of Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services, from the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, and from the Office of Criminal Justice Service and Ohio Sentencing Commission. They established there were 7,500 people arrested in 2000 for felony drug possession. 5,930 of them were convicted. 2,150 of them were immediately sentenced to prison. Another 1,250 violated probation and went to prison because for them, there was no drug court. We have adult felony drug court in 18 counties, and there are 67 other counties, John, that do not have them. I, wait a minute now. I thought I saw the number that the latest number on drug courts. We have 88 counties that we have now have 48 drug courts. We have 48 drug courts. Only half of them process adult felony cases. The other are family courts where the person has not been charged with possession of drugs, and the rest of them deal with juveniles. This deals with adult felony offenders because juveniles don't get a felony record for drug possession those people end up with that felony record when they come out of prison in 12 to 18 months. They can't qualify for a student loan. They no longer qualify for any housing assistance. They face a barrier the rest of their lives finding employment and becoming a tax-paying productive citizen. John, do these numbers surprise you? They are, I don't agree with those numbers. If there are people in prison, they have been convicted of multiple offenses and the reason that you go to prison is that you have been convicted not only of drug uh, use, possession or use, but also a felony one, two, th or three. And so those are the people who are going to prison. If you are, con are, are charged and convicted of a felony four and five, which is possession and use, then you don't go by law to prison, you go to jail. Do your numbers identify how many of these people are only convicted of, of possession and use? The Ohio Sentencing Commission advises that 97% of them, drug possession was their most serious offense. Only 3% of them were plea bargained down from some other offense. 97% of these people had the most serious charge of drug possession. They might have had a minor a petty theft charge or something of that nature, or they may have had paraphernalia, but they do not have more serious crime. But you cannot go to prison for possession or use. It is a F4 and 5, and I serve on the Sentencing Commission. The Sentencing Commission has taken a stand against this constitutional amendment, you know, and Fritz Rauschenberg, who, and, and David Durrell, are telling me you're not giving any numbers of that sort at all. And in fact, they took a, a stand against the amendment. Okay, we have, I have no way right. of no, you don't know that. So, so let's, let's move on to another, right. another issue here. And that is the issue of proposing this as a constitutional amendment Absolutely. rather than as a statutory law or set of laws. These are not the kinds of proposals that normally end up in the Constitution because it also there's an appropriations amount in this. There's a, you know, the 427 million or whatever. 247, 247. over eight years. Yeah, okay. The very specific amount to be appropriated, very specific details about how things are to be handled and, and people who are charged would be handled. Um, why a constitutional amendment? Absolutely. The only way that we could have the money appropriated for this initiative was to do it with a constitutional amendment. You may not appropriate any money with a legislative initiative, and so it was necessary to use that vehicle. This is not unique. But the legislature could uh, 
appropriate. The legislature one, has had this initiative before them in legislative form for a year, and legislative leaders have not saw fit to even grant it a hearing. So that's not going to happen. And this is not unique or anything new. Ohioans have voted for multiple constitutional amendments over the years that appropriated huge sums of money. Under the Rhodes administration, we passed amendments that funded $3 billion worth of development projects for schools. Those were for constitutional amendments, not just bond issues? Those were constitutional amendments, and they're okay. still in the Constitution, which is why it's 50 pages long. Okay. And so this is nothing new. And uh, those amendments funded worthwhile projects that met at that time, social needs, education, development, housing, highways, veterans benefits. Drug abuse is another ser serious social need. Why can't it be addressed with a constitutional amendment if all of these other social needs were met with one? John, what about this approach? I think is, it is wrong. It's also interesting to me that every major daily in a newspaper in but the state. But why is it wrong? All right, I'll tell you why it's wrong. One, it, it, it says it appropriates dollars for this, but it doesn't say where that money comes from. The state of Ohio right now is in bad, bad shape financially. If this passes and then the $39 million, million dollars is appropriated for the second year through the sixth year, they're going to have to take that $39 million from somewhere else. And I don't know where that's going to so, come from. So, but is from. this strictly, in your mind, is this wrong only because of the appropriations part of it? Or do you, is there a larger issue here? For example, some people have raised, as I've read some of the articles, raised the point that if we pass this as a constitutional amendment, the only way we can adjust it once we get into application is by constitutional amendment, rather correct. than by going back and simply passing a refinement in the state legislature. Let me address the two points. First of all, on where is, where is the money going to come from? The money is going to come from the savings. The difference between $23,000 a year for prison and $3,500 a year for treatment. That is going to generate tremendous savings. And I, I don't want to stop you, but that goes back to exactly how many people are in prison. It goes back to our numbers question. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, but I just, I, cause we can't settle that, but I just want to point that out. All right, the fine. Savings are there if your numbers are right. But let's look at what we're spending on prisons now. We spend a billion dollars a year on this state to operate prisons. The prison system is the largest single employer in the state of Ohio. It hasn't been, when I went into the legislature, we had seven correctional institutions in this state with less than 10,000 people in them. We now have 34 correctional institutions, and two years ago we almost hit 50,000. That is quintupling the number of people in prison and the number of institutions in less than 25 years. Very quickly, you also, I think, might want to address the question of refining this if it's a constitutional Absolutely. amendment. Uh, every constitutional amendment is adjusted by legislation. I have carried, I carried legislation that implemented the constitutional amendment that requires people in prison to work because I didn't think they should get a free ride. Uh, this amendment will have enabling and implementing legislation. The Department of Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services will pass rules. This is not the final word on this question. John, what about this? Uh, Constitute. I mean, all that I know, and I am not. I'm not a legislator, and I'm not an attorney. But I'm told that the, that if if it is an amendment, that it will have to be changed by another amendment. And Ed is disputing that, and I can't really tell you that. John, one of the things that you've been very much in the forefront in this community, you helped found and create the drug court. That's right. One of the arguments has been that this amendment will actually weaken the drug court. What's your view on that? I think it will uh, weaken the drug courts and it will also weaken the courts that, uh, that do not have a dedicated judge. And that's really what a drug court is, having a dedicated judge. It will weaken both of those. How does one, it weaken the drug well, court? Well, one of them, for example, is that uh, with the drug court, to, uh, you, there is a screening that says, are you suitable to go into this program? and you first must plead guilty to the charge and then with after pleading guilty you enter into the uh, into the program if you successfully complete the the uh, program 
then those charges are dropped forever. So in other Secondly, words, you sort of have that conviction already hanging over right. you. Secondly, there is what I call the hammer, that if a person is, is uh, found to be taking drugs while they're in the program, the judge can say, well, I guess maybe I'll put you in jail for a year. And then after several months, they come back and they say, well, gee, you know, do you want to go in jail or do you want to do this? The maximum time of incarceration, if you are, if you fail in this program, is 90 days. And that's a, that is a real problem. The third problem, though, is that currently, there, uh, my understanding of this uh, constitutional amendment is that the treatment people cannot show, can either not demand urine tests for drugs, or they cannot show the judges the urine test results. So you have no idea whether a person is taking or not during the, pr the, pr I, the program. I, I'm going to pick this up immediately, but I have to take a break right now. We'll okay. come back. And we'll, I got a feeling from Ed's reactions here that <laughs> he's got a different point of view on this. I think so. OK. So stay tuned. After the break, we're going to pick up right where we leave off. Welcome back. We're going to pick up right where we left off. Ed, uh, John laid out a couple of things there uh, about the impact on drug courts. One of them was that under this new proposal, uh, providers wouldn't have to uh, uh, do urine tests. What about that? Uh, first of all, let me say drug courts are good. John, I congratulate you on your efforts down here to establish a drug court. Cincinnati is one of the finest in the state. But we only have 25 of them serving 18 counties in the state. And we, this initiative would make every court in the state a drug court and enable them to provide treatment slots to those people that need them. Issue one says, in its purpose, and to ensure that drug testing is used as a treatment tool. There's further provision in here that requires the treatment provider to advise the court if a person does not pass their urine test. So that, that, that is not correct. What about this point about under the drug, current drug court, as John was just explaining it, a person has to plead guilty first and be facing that hammer of a, of a jail term uh, in order to, and then that becomes the motivator. This is just the opposite, as I understand it. You're not convicted. You, you request treatment first, and this is a way of avoiding a conviction on your record. Is that correct? You request treatment if you're eligible. The court right. will grant it. If you successfully complete treatment, which may take up to 18 months, and then keep yourself clean, you can apply to the court to have your record expunged and, and the charges sealed. That doesn't uh, conceal Are your you treatment Are you taking record. away a tool, a hammer, uh, a stick? We are not. We emphasize filling treatment slots rather than jail cells. Under the present law, if a person who goes into a treatment program shows up with that first dirty urine, the judge can apply that hammer and yank the person out of treatment and lock them up. All this initiative does is place more emphasis on treatment by saying that let's give them a second chance, and then if they screw up a third time, yes, you can incarcerate them as a sanction. So there's a second chance once you're in yes, the program. Yes, but, but there's some maximum sentence of 90 days. Why should we continue to support a nonviolent drug offender in a correctional institution at a cost of $28,000 for an additional 15 months when that's not going to do any good for the person. They'll just come out of there a better criminal than when they went in. They will still have access to drugs in Ohio's prisons, as we well know. And so that is not a suitable alternative. I think, well, I think that it is. And, and it, it is a fact that first and second time offenders are rarely, if ever, put into okay, and go incarcerated. Back to that. What, what kind of data exists about the effectiveness of the drug courts uh, beyond anecdotal data? I'll tell you, with, uh, with ours in Hamilton County, we had a recidivism rate of drug and alcohol addicted people of 75 percent. 
after six years of the drug court, we have had a recidivism rate of 9%. So not only are we returning people to their families and being productive people, but we're not costing the taxpayer money. Ed, would an alternative be spreading the, the use of drug courts? Absolutely. We support drug courts. But there's one thing John doesn't tell you about drug courts as good as they are. They don't count the people who drop out of the program along the way. They only count those who complete the program and then keep sure. themselves clean. I so that. your drug court program isn't the 93% panacea you would like people one to think the, it one is. One of the uh, suggestions by some people is that by creating this new treatment, this drive to treatment that th this Constitution would do, is that it would so jam up the treatment uh, uh, mechanism that people who have not yet been arrested, not part of the legal system yet, wouldn't be able to get treatment themselves, people who aren't part of the court system. That's not correct, because this initiative requires that the Department of Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services present programs not be altered in any way. In fact, this would restore to the Department of Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services the $6 million that this governor has cut out of their treatment budget in the past 18 months. So they will have an additional $6 million, plus they won't have any of the burden of this program. They will be able to treat far more people before they get to the justice system, as well as juveniles and as well as alcoholics. But the State Department is only dealing with those people who have entered the criminal justice system. They are not dealing or providing funding for people who have not. And one of the comments that the proponents of this have made is that in a survey, 50% of the people of a surveyed said, yeah, they know people with alcohol and drug problems, but they have not entered the system. You know, there I know people who are, I might call an alcoholic or a drug, but they, uh, they have never been arrested. What, one of the things that, that, one of the issues here is, is this a local initiative, Ohio initiative, or is this part of a larger national campaign to change the drug laws nationally, particularly being pressed by the Drug Policy Alliance and the, the, the combination of George Soros, Peter Lewis, uh, John Sperling? How much of this is Ohio just the next piece in this process of changing drug laws? Well, first of all, uh, Peter Lewis is from Ohio. He, he, is. he lives in Beechwood. Dick Wolf from Columbus is also an Ohio one and a prominent supporter of this. He's contributed to it. Uh, this initiative was drafted by the Saxby Law Firm in Columbus, Ohio, who was founded by the former Attorney General of the United States, a United States Senator, and also Attorney General of Ohio. So I feel very comfortable that this is an Ohio proposal, 780,000 780, Ohioans signed the petitions to put this initiative on the ballot. This is an Ohio issue, Ohio issue one. This organization, this national organization in other states, Arizona and particularly in the West, has uh, also worked for the adoption of medical use of marijuana or for decriminalization. Are those next steps? Ohio uh, decriminalized marijuana in this state 25 years ago. Uh, a, a small amount, up to 100 grams of marijuana in this state, only nets you a $100 fine, which you pay, and there's no criminal record. So it was decriminalized a long time. This has no impact either way on marijuana. This is intended at those drugs that cause you a felony record and mess up your life. John, I want to go to sort of a larger question here for you at the end, and that is, isn't it hard after the last 30 years or so to defend our drug, our ability of this society to effectively treat the problems of drugs and the, le the way it's handled in the legal system, the growth of the, of the prison system that Ed pointed out, and, and other, you know, I've had Republican Congre uh, legislators say that same thing. They're, they're sure. appalled by the growth of this. I'm, I'm appalled Isn't that by hard? it, too. It, isn't it hard to defend what we've been doing? It is hard to defend, but we, we, for example, had the first drug court in Ohio, and it's been six years, only six years since that went into effect. You know, drug use is a problem. I think this will not solve the, the drug use, 
everybody currently who has been convicted of a drug offense will be treated as a first-time drug offender under this uh, constitutional amendment. And I don't think it's going to be helpful. I want to make sure people get uh, some information. If you're interested in reading more about issue one, here are some possible websites. The Secretary of State's website has the official ballot language for the amendment, plus some summaries of arguments pro and con. The official website of the proponents of issue one can be found at www.ohiodrugreform.org. The group spearheading the opposition to issue one, Ohioans Against Unsafe Drug Laws, has a website at www.unsafedruglaws.org. Thank you very much. Complicated issue. We're going to follow it in the next uh, next eight weeks, and we'll see what happens. Thanks, Thank Dan. Thank you. Thank you for making Newsmakers a part of your Sunday morning. See you again next week.